Must be an important lesson in this. But what? <laughs> I smell a leak. Help! Uh, my boots got sand or plenty in them. Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Yep. Hundred and one, hundred and two, hundred and three. Got any battles? Hungry like a wolf I am. Hundred and fifty two, hundred and fifty four. Scrubbing duty again, oh gods. You mad? Don't shake that. You can try to win them all, but you won't. New orders? No? Ah. I bit the white of an eye from half a league away. The bigger they are, easier 
thing about slings, they hide well. Wait, you're serious? Her Majesty is exceptional. Hail Katza! Looking to dance, mate? My prescription, a bit of bloodletting. Hmm. A highly curious case.
The Devil's Tower. We draw near, Your Grace. No sign of villain yet, far as I can see. Unsurprising. Prompt he never was. The Queen had chosen to meet Willem at Devil's Tower, and not without purpose. The structure stood on an aisle, so no foe could approach without first exposing themselves on a narrow bridge. The aisle had little vegetation midst which to conceal a large force. A small unit could evade detection. Altogether, not much to fear. No escorts were your terms, began Gascon, with a hint of mischief. But better safe than sorry, I always say. What are you suggesting? Yours truly, and four chaps, behind the walls. Give a signal, any signal, and we'll leap to your side. Meave struggled with her conscience. There was no honour in Gascon's plan, but prudence, certainly. In the end, she nodded in agreement, though not without compunction. Willem arrived soon after, the heavily armoured cavalry he had in tow clearly there to boost his courage. He left them at the foot of the bridge and rode across alone. A stiff wind from the river nearly made off with his ermine fur cloak. Willem and the mother who'd borne him stood face to face. They gazed into each other's eyes, waiting to see who would look away first. When neither did, Meave broke the silence. Time flies, and I have a kingdom to liberate. No need to drag this out. What's this about? Tell me. I thought my messenger already did. Oh, he did. And how? Willem I wishes to arrange a truce. Only, Willem I is in no position to parley on an equal footing. Willem I can, at most, offer his unconditional surrender, because Willem I's losing this war. Yes, Mother, I am. And I see that by losing I've at last made you content. Don't play the victim. What next? Will you say you turned cloak because Mummy showed no warmth, displayed no feelings? It would be unfair, any such judgement. You did show feelings, chiefly enmity, contempt. But that's not why I betrayed you. No, I simply disagreed with your choices, assessments. I had every right to do what I considered just and good. And I had every right to voice my view, which you ever ignored. <sighs> Yet this is neither the time nor the place to discuss that. Let us parley as strangers. I'm losing, you say. And you're right. But I haven't lost yet. And have no intention to surrender. I am ready, however to renounce my fealty to the Empire and pledge my forces to you. As long as you fulfil my conditions. Mm-hmm. Let me hear them. First, you will not rescind the reforms I've authorised already, any of them. Second, you will guarantee both my safety and that of my advisers. Third, I shall remain your heir and next in line for the throne. These terms I cannot accept. Well, I had to try, Mother. Yet I can't deny your courage either. Come here. Look me in the eye. This couldn't have been easy. No, it wasn't. I trust when the time comes, you'll show the same nerve on the battlefield. I shall seek out your banner. Let the gods then settle our dispute once and for all. Goodbye, Mother. Willem bowed, turned and walked away. Meave's anger burned still in her gut, beneath a heart now heavy with grief. Soon thereafter, Meave's army set out towards Rivia Castle. It would not be long now before the decisive battle.
Your Grace, said Reynard, saluting and clicking his heels. Peasants from the Scala region have arrived at camp. Supplicants, wishing to deliver a plea to your person. Meave sighed. Supplicants, trials, audiences. All aspects of queendom she did not miss. Very well, bring them here, she replied. And instruct them to be brief, with no digressions. The band of commoners was led by a sturdily built beekeeper dubbed Ethelred, son of Theobald. Finding himself in the Queen's presence, he fell to his knees and waved his arms in his best impression of proper etiquette. Oh, my lady, the Queen, your gracious mightiness! Take pity on us tillers and toilers! Was all around leaving us but scraps to live off and belly that, to be honest. So we beg you, don't do it. Don't raise the levers. We can't pay more than... What? Meave interrupted. What the devils are you talking about? What? Your decree? One they nailed to our notice board? The peasant said, sheepishly pulling out a parchment and pointing to the relevant paragraph with his rough finger. We, Queen Meave, do hereby proclaim that if our throne we shall recover, the tallage, murage and pavage we shall raise threefold. The expenses of this war for to compensate at the cost of the common folk. Meave and Reynard exchanged astonished glances. They had issued no such decree. Yet the document bore her signature and seal. Perhaps it was Willem's doing. Impossible, Meave said firmly. My son sank low, but not so low as to forge my name. Then who fabricated this decree? The Nilf Guardians. The Queen replied without hesitation. They have access to my seal, to my scribes. They wish to spread fear, uncertainty and doubt, turn my folk against me. And they are liars without any honour. The Queen tore the falsified document to shreds, knowing this would solve nothing. She had to find the printers churning out these fakeries and end their run. And a plenty in them. Have it the white of an eye from half a league away. New orders? No? Ah.
This could hurt. You can try to win them all, but you won't. They are to target. Yeah. Go on, then, Kazel. Blood washes away all shim. Discipline, that is what you folk lack. Thing about slings, they hide well. Your humble servant. Or knock out one of your teeth. A grotto dum anime est. This is. Nothing personal, I assure you. 
Oi, Maeve! cried Gascon, as usual paying no heed to courtly etiquette. Come here a minute. What 
Would it hurt so terribly to occasionally address me by Your Grace or Your Majesty? I didn't want to be petty, but since you bring it up, you've never once addressed me as the Duke of Dogs. Oh. Meave sighed, rolling her eyes. Get on with it. My lads jumped one of the Black Clad's transports. Guess what they were hauling? Gascon handed Meave a pot filled to the brim with a thick, dark fluid. Hmm. Paint? Close. Printer's ink. Same tone used in those phony decrees. Meave spun on her heel, put a hand to her mouth, and yelled, Reynard! Send scouts to comb the area! Her soldiers returned a few hours later with good news. They were able to find a Nilfgaardian printer's workshop hidden in an abandoned barn. It was guarded by a division of elite infantry. Right, so? Gascon thumbed the edge of his blade. Shall we stop the presses? Time for the Nilf Guardians to publish a retraction, spoke the Queen as she drew her sword. Signed with their own blood. Follow me! The Lyrians did not need to be told twice. Their Queen's honor, her good name, that was a cause well worth fighting for. This could hurt. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Bigger they are, easier they are to target. <laughs> Off to the front yet again.
take any more. Quiet, or the Commissar will ah. hear. Company, forward march! to the front yet again. Pissing in the mort? Oh, you're dead! Wait, you're serious? They weren't expecting us. Seems they believed their own blarney. The Nilfgaardians fought fiercely, led by a seasoned covert agent. Seeing he would soon fall into enemy hands, he put a knife to his throat and, in a quick slash, sent blood pouring over paper and still wet ink. Reynard leapt towards him, trying to stanch the red tide. But it was too late, and the spy's secrets perished with his last gargled breath. Neve picked up a freshly printed pamphlet. The document listed her many crimes and misdeeds, 
the true and the manufactured alike. Above the main body of the text, an etching depicted her, well, in a very unflattering manner. How about a taste of their own medicine? Asked Gascon, piecing blocks of type into a scathingly foul phrase. Me and the lads will scratch out a couplet about Epdahi, spread it around the countryside, give the folk a hearty laugh at those tossers' expense. Yes, these presses should be put to good use, the Queen said. But printing lewd jests is not it. We must spread facts. Tell what the Nilfgaardians did in Aldersburg, how they tried to murder me in Mahakam and Angren. What fate lies in store for those they conquer? Gascon grew serious and set the ink-stained type back down. Get to work. Before the sun sets, I wish to hold the first document in my hands. Soon, in every town, village and tavern, there hung a notice detailing Nilfgaard's crimes. The outraged Rivians did what they could to strengthen the Queen's army, some by offering coin, others by joining her ranks. Nilfgaard left none alive in Rosberg, not even one woman! And no child was spared! Peasants from Edirne have been captured and put to work by force! Nilfgaard now prepares the same fate for Rivia and all Rivians! Emperor Emir Var Emerys is a Vran imposter! A Vran Doppler! Nilfgaard left none alive in Rosberg! Not even one woman! And no child was spared! Thank <laughs> you. 